Boys and girls, can you see her brown skin? That means that she's a Lamanite. But here in this scripture, it tells us, and that if you're righteous and if you keep the commandments, your skin can become white like ours. I was so excited because I had never really picked up on that in reading as a family. It was always early morning and I was always half asleep. So I was so excited and I'm like, sister, primary teacher has told me this. I'm going to go home and I'm going to be so righteous. So I went home and I tried really hard to be nice to my siblings. And that night when I said my prayers, I'm like, heavenly father, I chose the right all day long. Do you please make my skin white? And I went to bed with all the faith of a seven-year-old child, thinking that in the morning my skin would be white. Moroni tells Joseph that these ancient plates contain an account of the former inhabitants of this continent and the source from whence they sprang. For the next three years, Joseph Smith said he was given divine help in translating these gold plates into the Book of Mormon. The story begins in the first book of Nephi, with a Hebrew family fleeing the city of Jerusalem around 600 B.C. The father of this family was a man named Lehi. His youngest son was named Nephi. Nephi writes in 1 Nephi chapter 17, verse 8, that the Lord spake unto me, saying, Thou shalt construct a ship after the manner which I shall show thee, that I may carry thy people across these waters. After the ship was completed, Nephi says, We did put forth into the sea, and were driven forth before the wind toward the promised land. The notes suggest that this Hebrew family landed in the Americas about 589 B.C. Because a narrow neck of land is often described in the Book of Mormon account, Central America is where most LDS scholars have taught that Lehi's family landed in the New World. 2 Nephi 1.8 speaks of the Americas as being uninhabited when it says, It is wisdom that this land should be kept as yet from the knowledge of other nations. Soon after arriving in the Americas, a division happened between Nephi and his oldest brother Laman. From this division, two separate nations emerged. Those who followed Nephi had God's favor and were called Nephites. 2 Nephi 5.21 describes the Nephites as being white and exceedingly fair and delightsome. The Book of Mormon teaches that the Nephites were a sophisticated people who grew into a large civilization. Helaman 3.8 describes how the Nephites populated the American continents when it says they began to cover the face of the whole earth, from sea south to the sea north, from the sea west to the sea east. Mormon 1.7 says of the growing Nephites, the whole face of the land had become covered with buildings, and the people were as numerous almost as it were the sands of the sea. The other nation grew from the people who follow Nephi's rebellious older brother, Laman. They were now called Lamanites. 2 Nephi 5 verses 21 and 24 says of the rebellious Lamanites that the Lord did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them. And, and can I just say one thing? You Mormons, you, uh, you have pretty odd views on Indians. That they're dark skinned and so why you want to be in business with us, huh? We're not really Mormon Mormons, and I'm not sure that's really part of the deal anymore. Well, that's right, Margie, it's not. Yeah, but you believe in Book of Mormon, yeah? Yeah, and in Book of Mormon it says very specifically that Indians are lonesome, dark-skinned Lamanites. <laughs> and, and just in case you didn't notice, um, Jerry is Indian, so is he going to have to be turned white and the lights on? <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean... Because of their cursing which was upon them, they had become an idle people full of mischief. The Book of Mormon at times describes the Lamanites as being even more numerous than Nephites, but far more primitive. The basis of the belief that Lamanites uh, were the ancestors or the principal ancestors of Native Americans is doctrine. It's church doctrine. It's, it's taught in the scriptures. We are in a dilemma now. The genetic evidence shows clearly that American Indians are not Hebrews. They are not Israelites. The archaeological evidence shows the Book of Mormon is not true. It is another world. 
thriving with a hundred million people, connected by elaborate roads, bridges, and social networks spanning continents, with monumental cities aligned to the heavens. in some of the greatest civilizations on Earth. This is America more than 500 years ago. Native Americans create America's first democracy that later inspires the United States Constitution. Shape Mississippi Swampland into the largest pyramids on the planet carve Andean mountain slopes into fields that feed millions, and domesticate plants that now provide 60% of the world's food. They elevate America's natural beauty into spiritual beliefs that echo across 10,000 years. And dig deep into those beliefs to survive the worst loss of life from disease and genocidal warfare in history. We are not dead. We're often referred to in the history books in the past tense. But here we are in the present, and we're going full force. You know, we're still here. The Inca traditions, the Inca knowledge has never disappeared. It's still alive. It's not a religion, it's a way of life. When I come out onto the water, there's a connection to my ancestors, a relationship that goes through my blood and my veins. As a Comanche woman, this just completes me because all of my relatives were here. They probably prayed for us and prayed that someday we would be here and our culture would continue. The people that have lived here have understood this place and this knowledge has been accumulated over thousands of years. The past is also part of the present. This is a new vision of America and the people who built it. This is Native America. Third Nephi chapter 11 describes the Book of Mormon's crowning event when Jesus Christ appears in the sky when he visited the Americas around 33 AD. Apple Group X is really a fascinating story because the X files of Native American genetics because it burst on the scene in 1998 Scientists didn't want to believe it, but they found a new haplogroup in addition to A, B, C, D uh, among the uh, Indians of the Great Lakes in particular. And that was haplogroup X. And so immediately the scientists uh, who have a kind of ide fix, in my opinion, uh, set about trying to find haplogroup X in Mongolia and Siberia, because of course all American Indians, all upstanding American Indians came across the Bering Land Bridge chasing woolly mammoths, right? So uh, they weren't able to find haplogroup X in Siberia. They found one case of it. <laughs> that wasn't enough. Haplogroup X was a Eurasian type. So then they started talking about, oh well maybe they uh, got here by jumping across the ice in a circumpolar fashion, okay? Well, it kind of rested there for a while. As it turned, and last year, finally, the mystery of haplogroup X was uh, revealed in a, in a very important study by a team under Dr. Schluss, and he determined without, without any doubt that the origin of haplogroup X was the hills of Galilee. It was that clear. That's where, because where you have the greatest concentration and the greatest diversity, you have, that's the origin. There's no controversy among DNA experts about the Middle Eastern origin of haplogroup X. The only question really is, when did it arrive in the Americas? Uh, most um, projections about 
ancient human history, pre pre his prehistory really, are based on a mathematical and statistical model called uh, phy phylogenetics. What we find in the journals is that it is commonly thought among DNA experts that there was an outmigration of haplogroup X from the Middle East about 40,000 years ago. That's a pure projection. You know, it's a mathematical progression going back to there based on how mitochondrial DNA uh, uh, mutates. Uh, is it true? Who knows? But what most people don't realize is that in, among these same experts in these same journals, there is controversy about the dating. So, you know, I think these are projections. The controversy is between those who assume a theory that man branched from chimps five to six million years ago versus those who are using newer actual findings from DNA pedigree studies. The theoretical dating gives much longer time frames, but the actual data shows a 20-fold reduction and would place the Middle Eastern outmigration of haplogroup X about 2,000 years ago, plus or minus. Uh, is it true that uh, all Native Americans came from 10 families that stumbled across the Bering Strait chasing wo woolly mammoths uh, before the last ice age? I don't think mine did. But where else is this DNA found? And where did it originate? The form of haplogroup X that's present in the Americas is known as haplogroup X2A. And this specific type is defined by a number of additional mutations that Native Americans who belong to haplogroup X share. Um, this particular form of haplogroup X is not found in Europe. In fact, it's not found, as far as we know at this point in time, anywhere in Europe or Asia. Um, but in particular, there is no con there's no recent connection to Europe and to European individuals who possess haplogroup X. Um, the only similarities that we see are similarities that stem from much more distant, much more ancient ancestry um, that probably dates back 30,000, 40,000 years, perhaps somewhere in the Near East. And so what most likely happened is that this very ancient common ancestor of individuals who belong to haplogroup X had descendants who split and went two different directions. Probably some of these individuals moved to Europe, others moved towards Asia and up towards Beringia. And it appears that this Asian form of haplogroup X is what eventually made its way into the Americas. There have been some recent studies that have suggested that this particular distribution of haplogroup X in the Americas is most consistent with a migration from Asia through the Bering Strait over the land bridge and then down through the ice-free corridor. And so if individuals with haplogroup X migrated through that ice-free corridor, they would have first entered the continental United States and continental North America in the upper Great Plains. And it would make sense then that we would see the highest frequency of haplogroup X today in populations in that region. If the Book of Mormon is not a literal history, then it should follow that uh, what happens in it isn't a history. The, yes, yeah, a crowning event. Jesus appearing to Americas, you know, as a you know light from the sky and then appearing in glory. Did that really happen? Uh, if the people didn't exist, it couldn't have happened. The authenticity of Moroni, the golden plates, and Joseph Smith's testimony concerning them are all invalidated if in fact it is discovered that the Book of Mormon story is not real history. The status of prophet is also at stake for Joseph Smith because he claimed the history told in the Book of Mormon was God's Word, the most correct book on earth, and the keystone of the religion he was building. Now DNA evidence directly addresses at a fundamental level the correctness of the Book of Mormon and raises a very uncomfortable question for the LDS Church. Is the Book of Mormon true? We are in a dilemma now. The genetic evidence shows clearly that American Indians are not Hebrews. They are not Israelites. The archaeological evidence shows the Book of Mormon is not true. We as Mormons were mistaken about 
who American Indians are and where they came from. We have based our beliefs upon uh, the Book of Mormon, which we thought was an accurate ancient historical record. The genetic evidence has pretty conclusively shown that that is not possibly the case. The traditional view that I grew up with uh, of the Book of Mormon is that it, that it was a story of the people, and I think it's fair to say all the people, of the American continent. The crux of the issue is, is what's been taught over 170 or so odd years of Mormonism. And that, what has been taught, and it's very clear, if we go back and look at the records of what's been taught, is, is that the Book of Mormon is a literal, factual history of the people that were on this continent and their visitation by Christ and so forth. There's no evidence in the current leadership of the church that this belief uh, is changing. Um, even a couple of years ago, we had uh, the, the first presidency uh, dedicating temples in South and Central America and, and uh, informing the, the local Native Americans that they're descended from Lehi. Recently, new inroads in the research on human DNA has allowed scientists to determine the relatedness of different populations around the world. Children inherit a mixture of their parents' DNA, which is a mixture of their grandparents' DNA, and so forth. With each subsequent generation, that DNA becomes increasingly mixed and blended with DNA from other ancestors. However, smaller, isolated amounts of DNA exist in the cells of both fathers and mothers that do not mix when passed to their children. The father's Y chromosome DNA remains intact as it is passed down to his son, and to his son's son, and so on through multiple generations. In the same way, the mother's mitochondrial DNA also remains intact as it is passed down to both her sons and daughters, from one generation to the next. Scientists are then able to trace these intact DNA markers back through hundreds of generations to determine ancestry. When the Y chromosomes or mitochondrial DNA are tested in hundreds or even thousands of individuals from two different populations of people, the results can be compared to see how similar or dissimilar these intact DNA markers are between people groups. Dr. David Glenn Smith has spent more than 30 years studying Native American genes. He has dozens of publications to his name. His lab at the University of California, Davis, is one of the country's leading test labs of Native American DNA. If you look at genes in Native Americans, uh, they came from their ancestors. They had to come from their ancestral populations, and those ancestors lived somewhere. Uh, you can look for those genes in Jewish populations, but you don't find them. If you look at genes that are commonly, most commonly found in American populations and those that are most commonly found in Jewish populations, they don't coincide uh, at all. And the ones that we see in Native American populations, um, both living today and in these hopeful cemeteries were the mitochondrial lineages A, B, C, D, and X. Were the mitochondrial lineages A, B, C, D, and X.